What do you think the primary indicator that the Fed is going to use uh, will be to guide policy moving forward? Is it going to be inflation? Because I would contend that employment is probably more important right now. Yeah, I think that's that's right. And I think what the other central banks that are at um, the virtual conference will be will be uh, stating pretty strongly is that it's not just about your inflation targeting, because that really hasn't been too much of a problem. It probably was a long time ago, but it hasn't been a problem for central banks for a long time because of so many deflationary pressures, the latter, latest of which is obviously the pandemic. That's a huge deflationary shock to the system. So they'll be saying, look, it's all about jobs. The US is probably going to print around about 10% unemployment at their next read. But obviously in, in a lot of other countries, it's worse than that and it's widely expected that or widely thought that uh, unemployment's being undercounted because of the number of, pe number of people that are on welfare checks at the moment who are still technically working even though they're not at work. So I think you're absolutely right. The central banks around the world will be saying, look, this inflation target is interesting for the markets, but for the real economy, it's about getting as many people back to work as possible and therefore staying accommodative or even becoming more accommodative. The S&P 500 at another record high. What's a potential catalyst to end this market rally, do you think? That's a very good question. It's difficult to see anything in the in the short term that, that's going to change the narrative around the melt up in PE ratios that we're seeing. So I think the S&P 500 forward PE is about 26 times, which is sort of up there in, in, in historical terms. But it's difficult to see too much movement in, you know, downward movement in PE and then comes back to earnings. They've generally been better than expected or, or probably better than feared is a better uh, phrase, not just in the US but around the world. So I think the earnings picture gets better. It's difficult to see PE ratios coming down too much. So it really might, might just be if there is uh, a view starting to emerge that inflationary pressures are building and we do see a sell-off in bond yields, that could put a little bit of downward pressure on the market. But, but X that, Matt, it's very difficult to see too much slowing the equity market down in the short term. When it comes to strategy, is the gold rush over? Mm. We've been on this one pretty early, as you know. It became a very, very crowded trade. I think every major newspaper and, and media outlet was talking about the benefits of gold in a portfolio. And we've seen huge uh, retail buying of ETFs and things like that. So it, it did get a little bit overbought for a while and, and it's, it's started to pull back. The price action last night was interesting in, in that we had quite a lot of things moving against gold, including the currency, but it actually moved higher. So we think this pullback that we've had in gold, so it's gone down, you know, probably 100 bucks from its high, is probably a good opportunity for people to reset. For, so for those investors, Investors that don't have a reasonable allocation to, to uh, gold in their portfolio. So I'm thinking around 5% is probably a, a good place to start. Uh, use this pullback in the gold price to probably uh, add that position in.